Mr. President, while we may have struggled with key aspects of our budget process in the past, I'm happy to note that we have made some important progress. To start with, we are seeing the budget presentation coming slightly earlier this year, though we hope to see an, an even greater improvement on this in the coming year. But more importantly, however, is that so far in this year's budget process, it has benefited from greater cooperation and consultations between the National Assembly and the Executive. Mr. President, I wish to note that the National Assembly recognizes, however, that the problem with our budget and budgeting processes goes far deeper than the relative progress we have made. This is why in August this year, we inaugurated a joint executive and legislative committee and a technical committee to review our budget systems and identify ways we can make them more transparent, more participatory, more resource-oriented, and therefore more effective. The committee has since submitted its report, and the National Assembly already started the process of implementing the recommendations. Already we have tried to bring the key highlights of the report into effect within 2016 framework. These include pre-budget consultation and engagement, greater information sharing and recording, public hearing on the public bill, and drafting of an organic public bill. And finally, the amendment of the Public Procurement Act. Our hope is that the remainder of the recommendations of this report would be implemented within the 2017 budget year with the passage of the organic budget law. The organic budget law will provide the legal framework for regulating the procedures that budget preparation, approval, implementation, and even accounting must follow. It will bring the budget and national planning regime within a clearly defined framework, thereby ensuring greater predictability, transparency, and efficiency. When the current National Assembly introduced the civil society public hearing on the budget initiative, the idea was to open up the budgeting space by incorporating the civil society in the budget process, thereby ensuring greater transparency and accountability. We are proud to say that this engagement has come to stay as a crucial part of our budget approval process. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, honorable members, you will recall when the National Bureau of Statistics came out with the numbers to confirm that the Nigerian economy has slumped into recession. The National Assembly rose with one voice. Through a joint resolution, we recommended that Your Excellency make a State of the Nation address on the plan of government to get out of recession and 20 important executive actions, in our view, needed to be taken to get the economy back on track. The National Assembly on this part listed and prioritized 11 economic reform bills for passage. We intend to get these bills ready alongside the 2017 appropriation bill. We believe that these core elements of this bill we aid the executive in mobilizing the required private capital into the general economy. In the thinking of the Eighth National Assembly, our country can no longer rely on the public sector alone to spend us out of recession. It is therefore critical that we mainstream private sector business and investment in the economy. To achieve this, we must make it much easier and efficient for people to invest and do business in our country. Further to this, we are also aware that we must attract private investments to play a central role in our economic recovery efforts. We must make deliberate efforts to market Nigeria as an attractive brand through a very robust and highly coordinated process of engagements. This effort must necessarily start with injecting confidence in the market through clarity and consistency of policies. We must speak the right language and show that we're open and ready for business. The overarching purpose of a budget is essentially to ease the economic pressure on our people in general, and the poor especially. The 2070 budget assumes even a greater significance, particularly in this time of recession. 
Mr. President, the feedback we get from our visits to our various constituency is that there is hardship in the land. We can see it, we can feel it. This situation therefore commands all of us as government to a greater sense of urgency. We cannot work magic, we must continue to work the clock. Our people must see that the singular preoccupation of government is the search for solution to the current economic hardship and the commitment to ease their burden. They don't want to know what political parties we belong, or the language we speak, or the God we worship. They have trusted their fates in our hands, and they need us now more than ever to justify that trust they have reposed on us. The people of Nigeria will pardon us if we do some things wrong, but they will not forgive us if we do nothing. And that is why, Mr. President, these, the two chambers have taken a position. Whatever may be our differences, our differences, our opinions on issues of the economy, we will work with one common purpose for this reason. I wish to reassure Mr. President that the National Assembly will continue to seek opportunities to deepen this relationship because we are convinced it's only by working closely together that our country can make the progress that we desire. It is in times like this, when we are challenged from all sides, that we need to develop new friendship, new relationships, and cultivate more friends. No one can clap in one hand and expect to be heard. This is a time when compromise engagement is too necessary for successful collaboration and cooperation. This is why I am encouraged the executive to continue with the engagement plans across all sectors and stakeholders in the country particularly with our brothers in the Niger Delta and other parts of the country where instability is imparting on our collective economic and security aspiration. Mr. President, you recall in 2015, I made a client call while receiving Your Excellency budget for that the 2016 budget needed to be bold and pragmatic to drive local production and promote made in Nigeria goods. Today, permit me, Your Excellency, to reiterate this call the only way we can cut down on our foreign exchange needs, create jobs, and stimulate entrepreneurship in this country is to promote local manufacturing investment. And this is why the National Assembly injected the Made in Nigeria Amendment into the Public Procurement Act. We are expecting that with your leadership, we will achieve even much in this area. It is the hope of National Assembly that the 2017 budget will continue to proactively pursue this policy objective. Mr. President, though we are confident that we are receiving from you a very well-articulated budget proposal, it is worthy humbly to point out that the best produced budget from the executive at all times still remains a proposal according to our constitution, which the National Assembly will work assiduously on. <laughs> on behalf of the National Assembly, we commit to work on the 2017 budget conscious of the responsibility that the current economic situation imposes on us, and driven by urgency to alleviate the sufferings of our people, and also bearing in mind your aspiration and vision for our people. We assure you, Mr. President, and all Nigerians, that not even a single minute will be wasted on our side in ensuring we get the budget approved. With these few words, I hereby invite Your Excellency to deliver your speech and lay the 2016 budget, 2017 budget proposals for the consideration of the National Assembly in accordance with Section 81 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. I thank you and I extend the to you.